P Radio is back on the air. Hi, I am your host, Mr. Fourth Row, and we've got a very special episode. We're going to dive into the force a little bit. Got uh, two uh, guests joining me here. I've got uh, the first, I've got the uh, Buffalo Brew Mock. Brew, how you doing? Very good, man. Here to travel the galaxy. (laughs) Great. And also joining me, I've got uh, from uh, Fast Performance uh, Colorado, Scotty Long. Scotty, how you doing? I'm doing good, Artie. How are you doing, man? I'm doing just fine. So uh, the first uh, question I got uh, for uh, both you gentlemen, um, how did you uh, first get introduced into the uh, galaxy of uh, Star Wars, uh, Brew? Take, take it off. Take, off, take it off. Uh, I was a very tiny, tiny little buffalo, and it's all Lego St- Star Wars. I was like, oh, sh- oh, cool, a little spaceship. So, um, so the actual Legos building them and stuff. Yeah. Oh, before they did the, the animated Legos. Animated. Oh yeah, I the, forgot the Lego series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's so Scotty, how did you get uh, introduced into uh, Star Wars? What was your first inkling there? Yeah, I think uh, the first time that I, I re- remember watching Star Wars was at my grandparents' house, and they had uh, they had a huge collection of VHS uh, tapes, like Disney stuff and everything like that. And, uh, I remember like, I remember watching the, the original trilogy, like before the, uh, all the like special effects and stuff like that were added, uh, over at their house. So that I probably watched like all three, uh, all three of the original trilogy, gosh, so many times over at my grandparents' house growing up. Right. Yeah. And uh, for me, it was, uh, of course, seeing, actually, um, I'm old enough to um, start seeing him in the theaters. I remember going to, uh, if anybody is uh, familiar with the uh, north the metro part of Denver, uh, specifically the Thornton area, um, the uh, uh, Star Drive-In, North Star Drive-In off of 84th and I-25, if anybody remembers that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, that's, I think that place is still operational. No, the drive-in isn't. Uh, it, oh, no. What's, what's currently sitting there now is uh, the uh, Sportsman's Warehouse, um, Appliance, uh, Mattress, oh, Factory I'm, th- I'm thinking of the uh, the other drive-in. Cinder that's kind of Yeah. Yeah, Cinder El Salo, which is a little farther south. But, yeah, North Star is up uh, I-25 and 84th. So, yeah. And uh, I think there's also a Dutch Brothers up there where the North Star is too. So uh, uh, shout out to I guess them because they seem to be a popular uh, coffee uh, chain sprouting up everywhere. Um, yeah. that, Drinks, they're amazing. Uh, uh, Dutch Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the line's always busy when I go by there, so they've got to be. Uh, what about um, additionally? Have you uh, both caught the uh, Mandalorian there on uh, Disney Plus, uh, Scotty? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my wife and I actually, uh, when like the first season came out, we both texted each other because they we saw that Disney Plus had uh, a deal with like Hulu and ESPN Plus for like twelve ninety nine. I'm like, uh, can we get this? Because I'm for sure watching the Mandalorian. And, uh, yeah, we've, we've been hooked ever since. And, you know, obviously watch like the first season and, uh, watch the whole second season, um, which just concluded not too long ago. Yeah. Just a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, uh, Brumac, I know we, we talked right before we started recording. I know you, you're caught up all with, uh, the first and, uh, second season, uh, what uh, what are your thoughts on the Mandalorian uh, uh, so far? When it thir- first came out, I was like, "Oh, this ain't gonna be very good," because mm-hmm. I wasn't that big of a fan of like Django and stuff. Mm-hmm. Or not Django Boba. Yeah, wrong one. Yes, yeah, sir. But it yeah. actually, ended up being my favorite thing ever. Now, <laughs> and now I really like Boba. <laughs> Uh, Scotty, what was your um, first impression on on the Mandalorian uh, when the like the first few episodes uh, came out? Uh, uh, the first season or the second season? The first season, yeah, the very, very yeah, thing first so, kicked off. Yeah, so 
you know, I uh, I'm kind of a, a fan of like old time westerns and like old war movies and stuff like that. And obviously, that was a huge influence on the Mandal on the Mandalorian, uh, based off of kind of the the storytelling and and stuff like that. And um, you know, it it was really cool to to watch um, just kind of Star Wars take a not so much like a step back, but really um really have a a call back to some of the like og uh spaghetti westerns and the og star wars and stuff like that not in 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 a sense of how it was shot and how the storytelling was was told compared to um you know the the newer movies which get knocked on a, a whole heck of a lot like you know the yeah. force awakens is essentially a new hope you know line for line but and and that's the way that the story the story is written but compared to the way the story is told in the mandalorian it was it was just really cool to watch and uh, i absolutely absolutely love the series and i think it's probably some of the best star wars that i've seen in very very long time yeah um uh, brew uh any other any thoughts uh, about that or addi- additional thoughts about like your first impressions of uh, the series first kicked off um uh-huh. I, I never really watched the western, so but he is right. It does feel like cowboy step back a little bit from like intergalactic space fighting, and here's a little laser sword, and it was just really it got really into the depth and lore of Star Wars more than most uh, cinematics would. Yeah, oh, you know, and then speaking of, like this cinematic. Um, and this is what I kind of took away from my first impressions was that, you know, this is a as a as a TV series, uh, quote unquote, uh, you know, it's an exclusive to uh, Disney Plus uh, that, you know, this is this is what Disney used to sell their service to get people to first subscribe, basically. hundred percent. Yeah. Just like, for example, you know, I'm also a, a Star Trek fan and. Uh, CBS All Access, you know, they use their property, which is the competing franchise of Star Trek, to put out Star Trek Discovery, which was the sell point of this is the, the exclusive show to this. So this is kind of what how the how the uh, networks and everybody is, you know, getting these streaming because that's, you know, that's the in thing right now. And that's where we are heading. Uh, but, you know, kind of getting back to where I was going, the what I thought was really great about the Mandalorian in this case is that this, even though it's a TV show, it it plays out cinematically the, the style that they're using. Um, And, you know, and then additionally, it's, it's one good thing that they have the flexibility is they're not, they're not set to a certain length of episode per, uh, you know, how, how long the episode has to be per episode. It can be 42 minutes. It could be 45. It could be, it could be 28, you know, and that's really, um, you know, kind of strange when you go on, you know, maybe like um, either going binge watching or if you're, you know, cheap keeping up week to week with this. And it's like, God, that was seemed like a, a, a quick episode. But then you look and it's like, oh, no, it was, it was 38 minutes. And, yeah. and then you have an episode that may be 23 minutes. And it's like, that felt like it was 40. <laughs> I mean, what do you guys, how did you guys, uh, speaking of that, how did you uh, both watch this? Did you guys watch week to week? Did you um, watch week to week uh, or binge? Or did you watch week to week and go back and binge to do a second viewing? I mean, how did you guys all, uh, how did you both watch this? Yeah, so I uh, I went week to week, and then uh, I don't I don't think that I went back to uh, watch like rewatch episodes and stuff like that. the The way that I kind of went about it was I, I would watch the episode, like digest it a little bit, and then go on the internet and like go on Twitter to see like what Easter eggs I'm <laughs> I probably missed or anything like that. Yeah, so like. Uh... Like uh, shorts guy, shorts guy in the background, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, Brew, how, how did you uh, watch the, the series? It was the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watched it week from week, and then I 
have to rewatch it sometimes because a family member wanted to watch it, which I was okay with. And then, yeah, I'd go on the social medias and just see, oh, what did I miss? And there's Shorts Guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I completely missed that guy uh, during, like, the, the first first time. And it's, it's kind of really funny how um, – how many details i mean obviously like shorts guy is um not supposed to be there but how many details kind of like that that are supposed to be there i absolutely miss like i know there's there's dudes on uh youtube and stuff like that that um will like translate the star wars language and and translate a sign and like what the meaning of the sign is and stuff like that. I'm like, you guys are so deep, man. Like, mm -hmm. I thought I was a big Star Wars fan, but uh, there, there's some folks that get it that get into the nitty gritty details. Yeah, definitely, so true. Uh, you know, along the same lines of uh, nitty gritty details and uh, Easter eggs and things like that. Uh, one thing that I was really uh, enjoying is. Uh, guest star appearances, especially in season two, we, you know, bringing it to wrestling. Of course, we got uh, Shasha Banks. Uh, we got Katie Sackhoff of additional uh, sci-fi fame of Battlestar Galactica. Um, we got Rosario Dawson in there. What did you uh, both think about some of these uh, uh, faces that you know we've been waiting for? Uh, that you know we've had got these rumors and then they finally appeared and uh, how did you uh, think uh, their uh, portrayal of their characters uh, came out uh, we'll start with uh, brew um <laughs> sasha even though she did almost nothing she did pretty good for doing nothing well, mainly did... the for uh, so doing she... a tomato ddt that was like yeah amazing <laughs> that's what i was gonna say she did have that in the uh you know towards the end of the season so that was kind of fun Scotty yeah, Butter. I liked. Uh, I, I tell you what, man. Uh, I don't know if you guys watch the uh, the animated Clone Wars series the whole way through, um, but like in the first couple first couple seasons of the Clone Wars, like I was not a huge uh, Ahsoka fan, and I thought she was just super annoying, and and kind of the dynamic between her and Anakin, and her and some of the other Jedi. Like I was just like she's she's another person to sell merch to um like little girls and stuff like that but towards the end of the end of the clone wars where uh i think dave filoni did a really good job of of having her mature um like within the force and and have like a mature character like i was absolutely stoked to see rosario Dars dawson uh play Anakin and like they still want to have Ahsoka a part of this like huge timeline um or a, a part of this story and then you know at the at the end of the day or the end of that episode she's still looking for Thrawn like I lit like I popped so loud and like I literally like got up out of my chair I'm like <laughs> oh my god she's still looking for Thrawn oh. yeah like it was awesome, man. And then you know, same thing. What Bruce said about uh, Sasha, like, you know, it was cool, cool to see her in, uh, in you know, some Mandalorian stuff. But at the same time, I was like, eh, they could have plugged, probably plugged anybody in there. <laughs> uh, let me ask you, Scotty. Uh, ask you a follow up question there um, about uh, about her. Uh, was it a little difficult though to get started with Rosario playing that part? and not hearing uh, Ashley Eckstein's voice? No, not really. Okay. Um, you know, I think uh, I, I don't have, like, a huge issue with, uh, like, character continuity and stuff like that. Obviously, uh, you know, I'd want to see someone that's very similar. Um, but I, I don't have, like, a huge issue with character continuity. Okay. Brewer, did you um, have any um, thoughts or issues uh, with that, that difference? I don't know. Actually, I just started watching Clone Wars because okay. of Mandalorian. Okay, so you were, yeah, so you're um just getting familiar with the uh, you know Ashley Eckstein um voicing voicing the role in the in the Clone 
Wars uh, series. Yeah. So, yeah, so you're not used to. Yeah, it's funny, Scotty, that you mentioned that because, of course, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, let's know, probably, maybe. Of course, uh, Ashley Eckstein, of course, uh, has that line, the her, her universe line that she promotes got started because of the role. And, uh, you know, the, the reason behind is to, you know, give women, girls, you know, that role model and, you know, something, you know, fun to enjoy, to experience, to wear, you know, and everything like that. So were you aware that uh, she did have that line going? The no, uh-uh, you I didn't. I'm, oh. No, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. Yeah. Something that she, uh, you know, started, of course, because Clone Wars, uh, the animated series is, of course, a few seasons old. So, you know, that's uh, something she did. And that was great. Uh, I've never been able to meet her like at a convention and I've always just kind of missed her. So, but that's going to be on my list eventually when we get back to conventions uh, again in the crazy world that we for sure do have, uh, do have going on. Um, so, you know, additionally, um, do you guys both think that you will probably do a uh, rewatch of the uh, the series, you know, episode, uh, season one, season two, uh, one or the other, or, you know, maybe uh, um, certain episodes because, you know, things you may have missed? Scotty? Yeah, I think uh, I'll think I, I think I'll come back uh, to it. And then, um, you know, obviously, like Disney had that big huge like executive meeting or investors meeting or whatever like, last month where they announced like so many so many shows and and one of those shows was uh the the book of boba fett mm-hmm. and uh i'm i'm super stoked to to read on that i think they did a really good job um kind of giving a little bit more character to boba fett uh because like same thing with brew um you know in empire and return of the jedi like i was like yeah he's kind of you know he's he's a dirty dude and and got han solo and then they they give him some some character um in the clone wars and i i won't spoil this for for brew but um you know even in the clone like the clone wars series i was like yeah okay you know whatever he's he's i don't really care about him and then they uh they, what's that i already had everything spoiled for clone wars don't worry oh, <laughs> sorry man but you know at the at the end of the day like i was super stoked on that so i i think i'll i'll come back to it and and re-watch um and you know kind of make sure i'm i'm good to go for all fifty thousand series series that disney has planned for star wars right yeah and and speaking of that i mean how well did they do that in episode promo for another series? I mean, just boom, there it was. Yeah, I think I think they really got a. They took that from uh, professional wrestling on how well they did that promo <laughs> to uh, help build another character. Yeah, well, I mean, it even I mean to even flash out, you know, that this is gonna, you know. The, the the uh you know the book of boba and going you know this is going to be a new series you know uh, even of course they already you know kind of announced it before you know before this got uh um put out there but i mean it's it just i it's so unique and you just don't see that yeah let me uh let me ask you guys this what do you think the what do you think's going to happen to uh to grogu cuz you know there's there's a lot of speculation and there's a lot of questions that have been asked after luke skywalker um took over to took grogu or or baby yoda what do you what do you guys think is going to happen to him yeah so yeah so we should clear you know spoiler alert people if you haven't listened to this (laughs) i watched the episode with you know you're going to be uh spoiled here uh uh, brew go ahead you have thoughts on that i'll let you go first one of two things. I think he either goes back to um, um, I forgot his name, the Mandalore guy, or he goes to the dark side. Mm, that's strong. That's yeah. strong speculation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because yeah. they did uh, mention that they they did, you know, she did sense a lot of uh, fear into him, and of course that plays back to this whole. Uh, you know, every time it seems like a Jedi gets uh, trained, uh, Skywalker, Ray, you know, in the movies, there's, 
always this the the cloud they keep saying the cloud of fear the concern of fear and and darkness and uh anger and everything so you know and we 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 kind of getting groku is we're getting kind of told that you know you know quote start with the baby yoda name moniker from him that you know it's all supposed to be cute and bubbly and and stuff like that and you know and, and mischievous you know with everything that he's kind of done uh you know from stealing the blue cookies to you know playing with the the controls and things of that nature and so you know we don't know where he's going to evolve to but with him now being in uh luke's hands for you know that currently that we know of i am just not really sure and you know and my understanding is we don't really know much still know much about this species you know so it's it's gonna be interesting to see how they develop and and one thing I, you know, kind of along the same lines, just a train of thought that I'm thinking is they're doing, they're, I think they do so well to be able to kind of, you know, where this, this lays in the time frame of the Star Wars uh, universe, Star Wars galaxy, is they're able to have the room to be able to fill in these holes and make things uh, make sense when they're not, say, um, handcuffed when they have to go say the from the um, uh, you know the episode four five and six of the movies and ha- then they went did one two three they're not handcuffed to make sure that they don't do something that's gonna not fill in the line for the evolution of the um, of the galaxy of the storyline uh, so they're I think they're doing such a great job with that. Um, when you have to be very careful because you're going to have those nitpickers out in the world, they're going to say that doesn't fit or that doesn't make sense or that's in the wrong place. Well, you're a hundred percent right on that. And you can look at what, uh, you know, what Disney announced as far as storylines go or, or new series and new movies go like nothing, nothing's really pointing back directly to the Skywalker saga timeline. Like everything, you know, it's all kind of, uh, it's going to be like fringe stories and they'll obviously like harken back to some things that happened into the Skywalker saga. But, you know, as far as like creative, creative freedom goes, they, they have to get away from it because there's just so much canon Mm -hmm. involved with, with that saga. And it's, and it's like, holy smokes, man, like we want to stay near that saga, but we, we've got to figure out a a whole different storyline that we're not, um, handcuffed as, as you said, to all the, all the canon and, and every, and every single line of, of the uh, Skywalker saga. Yeah. And that, and that is a huge word when it comes to uh, franchises is, is canon because for example, I mentioned um, the Star Trek universe, you know, for example, um, in Star Wars books, uh, novels, things of that nature were, have always been considered canon because they made sure that, what they the authors uh story writers and and the etc put out we're going to be able to fit star trek uh paramount v uh, viacom cbs that's on that side they really didn't care they just said hey these are non-canon these are just out of the world's uh out of context stories but now they are kind of backpedaling trying to reel those in but you've got this huge library quote unquote that I was like, I don't know how you guys are going to do that. And that's really hampering them uh, in some aspects and maybe helping them in others and vice versa with Star Wars. Um, Brew, do you have um, any thoughts about all this? Um, I was just thinking, actually, like, what do you, which um, of these series are you going to start telling stories after Episode Nine? Ooh. That's a good question. That is a good question. We started thinking, I was like, well, which one is going to take that big leap and start doing those stories? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I think, uh, I think after episode nine is, is definitely blue sky territory. Um, and kind of based off of what I've seen from Disney already, you can, uh, I mean, both of you guys can definitely correct me if, if I'm wrong, but, I think they're really trying to focus again, like I said, on those fringe stories within, 
you know, that 30, 40 year timeline of the Skywalker saga. And then they're going to go to the High Republic, which is like uh, hundreds of years before the Skywalker saga. So I don't I don't really know if they're going to um, really touch after episode nine. But man, it, it, it's going to have to. I don't know. The, the way that so much the, right now, especially with the High Republic coming in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In well, when it comes, in my opinion, when it comes to the to the movies, the movies need to be the, the movies need to be right now because of everything they've got going on. They have to be really careful and really committed to what they want to put in this, you know, two hour, two hour, fifteen minute movie. If they decide to, if they decide to do any more um because you know this was originally thought that it was going to be a um you know a three uh three sets of three that was the original original plan of course with uh with lucas to do this uh you know and you know it's you know of course interesting that of course then he had to, he started with episode four and they've had to then backfill uh, for for this and then go forward and you know it, it's kind of an evolution I, I find it really uh, interesting and fascinating that they've been able to uh, pull this off and you know luckily enough you know Lucas found a, a great um, a, a great a partner great company to be able to pull off you know seven eight and nine in in Disney um, you know, in, in, in my opinion, you know, he has somebody that's going to be a great, uh, uh, caregiver of, of the franchise. Cause that's what we're going to need in these historic franchises. In, in my opinion, with, with a star Wars, with a, um, with a star Trek, with a Marvel in, in this Dad, particular case, um, you, you, know, you know, we need to find, you know, we need to find somebody that's, you know, you hopefully going to be able to take the care and compassion, you know, with, uh, the, uh, DC universe, you know, see if they can salvage that thing. Oh, jeez. You know, um, <laughs> but they they need it. They need a, they need a Disney. They need a John uh, Favreau. They they need a uh, Alex Kurtzman. You know, uh, hopefully they can find somebody that uh, is is passionate about that. But um, that's just that's just kind of the way I look at it. It's it's going to be difficult just because uh, the massive amount of content that's you know going to be consumed. That they they plan it. They get all these ideas, and they want to make sure they 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 do it. They put those things out and um, spread those things out so it's not overwhelming to the consumer to to us when we're when we're watching that. Uh, Brew, you have any thoughts or things you'd like to see when it comes to the future? Um, honestly, Platt. Past episode nine, probably just step away from everybody being related somehow. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> getting, a little weird, getting Game of Thronesy. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see like I don't want to see a storyline about like Han's second cousin removes, uh, removes like grandchild and be like, oh my god, that's the grandchild of. Han's second cousin who's removed, you know, like I, I want to see something totally new. Um, obviously, you know, you kind of have to play like the fan, the, the fan service of like, mm-hmm. Oh, there's Ray and Finn cruising around in the Falcon for a little bit. And then like, they go away. Yeah. You know, and, and speaking of uh, fan service, of course, another disclaimer for spoiler alert, Seeing that X-wing uh, come in and uh, come in into the uh, the launch tube, the launch bay, uh, what was your first thoughts on that? Did you, did you think it turned out was going to be who it turned out to be? I it thought it was just, um, the fire pilots from um, the episode with the spiders. That's what I thought it was. I was like, what are they going to do? <laughs> right. Yeah. No. <laughs> I uh, I knew like deep down it was it was Luke. My it was kind of funny because I was watching the episode with my wife and she asked the same question. I was like, oh no, I I knew a hundred percent that it was gonna be Luke Skywalker, and then he shows up and starts just smashing on uh, the the dark troopers. I was like, yes, this is so sick. 
Yeah, and that was, uh, I mean, I, I really enjoyed that too. Uh, you know, it, it was really kind of, when I saw it, it was really kind of eerie that that X-Wing just kind of, sl- they when they showed it, they kind of just slowly kind of landed in the launch bay. And then, you know, we had this buildup of, you know, who could it be? And, of course, then we saw saw the Jedi robe, saw, you know, the, didn't really see any any face or anything like that. And, you know, first of all, I thought with the illumination on the face, you know, it looked a little green. I was like, well, maybe it's some, maybe it could be somebody else. Mm-hmm. But, you know, why would that be, you know? But then you turned out and then, of course, you know, we had another little, uh, little <laughs> uh, surprise appearance too that, that came in there. So, uh, that was kind of nice to see him as well. Uh, uh, but uh, along with that, uh, you know, is, you know, we're, my understanding, we're, it's going to be a little while before we see the next season. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I think, yeah I think it's like a year or something, right? Yeah, because yeah, they, they um, put in that uh, Book of uh, Boba is going to be um, December of, of, of this year. So that's going to take the place. Um, do you think that's a, 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 a good decision on their part to do that or not? And I'm going to preface this by, uh, what, for example, if you're not familiar with, uh, CBS all access and the Star Trek franchise is they are putting their series, their, their three Star Trek series, for example, kind of back to back to back. So they kind of put Picard, and then they put uh, Lower Decks, which is the animated, and then Discovery kind of back-to-back-to-back. So there's like 30-some-odd weeks of, of new Star Trek. Um, you think that uh, Disney might uh, take that cue and maybe try to do something like that? If they've got all these series that they're working on, and that way every week there's something going on and keep those subscribers because sometimes it's all about the money. Uh, <laughs> Scotty, what do you think about that? Yeah, I don't know. Um, that's that's a really great point and a, and a really great great question. Um, I don't I don't see them kind of following CB CBS's line um, because I I remember when they were putting out uh, you know the Force Awakens and then Rogue One and then uh, the Han Solo story like mm-hmm. and that was that was every year and that was just a movie. And I feel like I feel like people and fans got a little bit of fatigue um, when they started off with that model. So uh, I think they've I think they've kind of learned from, hey, you know, let's let's not bang everything out uh, right then and there and, and kind of trail people along a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see that. But. It also, in other words, another thing too that is, for example, for myself, when they were doing that, I was getting conditioned. Oh, it's Christmas time! It's time for another Star Wars movie. So, in a way, mm-hmm. some people were kind of thinking, you know, getting conditioned and, and thinking that. Um, Brew, uh, what do you uh, think about all that? Or you have any opinions? Um, same, different, or out there? I'm totally conditioned that Christmas time is now Star Wars time. <laughs> <laughs> It's completely replaced my holidays. <laughs> That's uh... well. If I'm correct, I think Mandalorian don't do they come out the same month? Book of Boba and Mando this year? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't know. Something we might we might look at. But I'm not real um, sure, but that would be interesting if they did do them concurrently. Um, would they do, release them both on the same day or do one on a Thursday and one on a Friday? Uh, that would, know. maybe it will just be a weekend of star Wars. Maybe that's their actual plan and start releasing shows mm-hmm. every cri- uh, around December and stuff. Yeah, that is, that is true. Ooh. That's a very good. Twenty two. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. It's a very, very good point. Um, all right. Well, uh, we, um, right now, uh, during this recording, uh, at the, when we're recording this, um, Scotty uh, is going to be on his, uh, Twitch stream. I believe if you guys yep. want to check that out after listening to this, he's going to be, um, hosting, uh, the, uh, OVW, uh, nightmare 
Cup watch along. Um, so, Scotty, uh, we're going to let you go. Uh, plug your uh, things for the, the listeners, where they can find you and Fast Performance there out on uh, the social media and uh, yourself and the such. Uh, absolutely. So uh, I just kind of started streaming and, and whatnot on Twitch not too long ago. So you can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash Scotty Tahoe. Uh, and then on Instagram at, uh, Scotty underscore sports med, uh, and then on Twitter, uh, Scotty sports med. I don't think I have a underscore on there and that's, that's kind of where I'm mostly, uh, mostly active on, but yeah, cruise on over to, to Twitch. All right. Awesome. Well, Scotty, uh, I guess we will let you go. And I think maybe brew and I will continue uh, talking for a little while and I'll, uh, ask the listeners to keep both of you out there on the uh, interwebs and the social media sounds good man thanks for having me on talk yeah. to you later okay you got it all see right. you all right so brew um you were talking about the uh the the christmas time did you watch the uh holiday uh lego uh, christmas special i did that was <laughs> hilarious <laughs> was that just a riot it was just total fun and uh just the different uh quote unquote uh uh, timelines that was uh, that was happening and uh, the um, you know <laughs> who is who and all the you know the multiple people same person and same timelines I mean what did you get a, did you get a kick out of all that it was amazing like I had to pause and rewind when um, it was Obi-Wan saying hello there to each other <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, do you remember? Do you remember back in the day when uh, there was the Yoda Furbies, and uh, no. you you would get uh, two Yoda Furbies talking to each other, and it was just uh, hilarious. Hilarious. Do you I am no. Do you, you, when was it? That was it was years and years ago when when Furbies were the thing, and there was the Yoda Furbies, and oh. they would be able to interact with each other. And... I don't think I was even good enough for a Furby when they came out. So, <laughs> uh, and you know, there might be some uh, videos out there on the uh, on the YouTube and such, but it just was funny because, you know, the way the Yoda talks obviously is so unique and different, and then you have these things programmed to interact with each other, and you could get some really interesting uh, conversations between. Um, to you know, in this case, uh, Yoda Furbies to, uh, you know, <laughs> just you know, with you know, I, you know, the Force and all that kind of talks. It was just, uh, it was amazing and just funny to see uh, those types of things. It was just was uh, 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 just great. So, uh, <laughs> I, the way Furby look always creep me out. So now I gotta look this up and we're gonna be talking to me like. <laughs> you're, you're nightmares tonight because of you. Uh, uh, so uh, you know. Additionally, um, you know, anything else in the uh, Star Trek uh, galaxy that uh, that you've hey, been what? enjoying uh, as of late? Where are we? You said Star Trek, but did I say Star Trek? Oh, st- the Star Wars universe. Oh, my, my <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of the universe. <laughs> the Star Wars universe. What? Uh, anything? Uh, uh, you know about the movies that you that that you really enjoy? What was what was the, speaking of which? What was the first movie of of the uh, the nine that you saw? Uh I think it was Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. Like, okay. Until this year, because I rewatched all of them this year in a row. Mm-hmm. Attack of the Clones was my favorite. But yeah, n- not anymore. <laughs> that's that's probably down there. Here's my question: What's your favorite out uh, of all of them? Uh, you know, I am gonna have to say uh, mine is probably um, a New Hope, and that's you know just because of of my age and when I got to see it and and things of that nature. And additionally, you know, like like Scotty had mentioned. Yes, um, the Force Awakens is got a lot of similarities to to the no, New Hope, but when it came out, when the Force Awakens came out, I did not think uh, anything of it beyond that it gave me the um, made me reminisce about 
uh, about New Hope and, you know, this franchise, you know, getting started with this and in and the thoughts and the storytelling and, you know, the, the basics of the storytelling, the good versus the evil and and then the plot turns that you can have, you know, in this. In, in in this in this franchise of you know I am your father and you know and, and a long lost sister and you know things of this so I, I would it, just say that just because it is now you know For, Force Awakens I think kind of is a is like a companion piece to uh, to uh, a new hope um, in, in one way I New Hope is my favorite too, but the mm-hmm. whole how you compare the Force Awakens to it, mm-hmm. that's amazing. I just watched it. I'm like, it, I don't care how similar it is. The Force Awakens, that's just great. Right. Still get a little too the eye. Yeah. And, you know, and it shows, in my opinion, it shows that because this was the first movie, of course, of the franchise under the uh, Disney umbrella. And. You know, everybody was, of course, it's like Disney. You know, this it's been under 20th Century Fox for the the longest time. What's Disney gonna do um, with this? Are they gonna be able to do a great job? But you know, people forget that. You know, Disney has all these <laughs> uh, companies under their umbrella that do other movies beyond the uh, family friend. Now, I think they've got like. Um, movies like uh, companies like Miramax and and companies like that are that are part of the you know Buena Vista uh television and movie studios so they've got lots of experience with this and a lot of great things that they can take for you know um you know people that have got experience um thoughts on how to get this to pull off and to fit in this universe cuz they they needed to in my opinion when they before they put this out they probably thought that we need to do this right so that we um do the uh, appropriate thing from acquiring this franchise from 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 Lucas and putting it in our um you know in our under our umbrella in our in our care be the caretaker and um just like I was saying you know you you need to have one voice um you know, to be that caretaker, even though, you know, like I said, in, in this case, uh, you know, for example, John Favreau, who, you know, I think is doing an amazing job and he's got the passion and, and the knowledge. And, you know, you have to be a fan, I think, too, to be a great caretaker of a franchise uh, such as this. I mean, Absolutely. what do you what do you think? Think about that? Absolutely. You got to be a fan of whatever you do. Sometimes it's good to have an outside eye, but you got to be a fan of what you do. Um, I think what Disney did with Force Awakens, it like just opened up potential. Because I remember after that, I was like, oh, my God, who's Snoke? What's going to happen to Rey and Kylo Ren? It opened up so many windows, and it was just amazing. Of course, after that, it uh, Snoke was a nobody, just a clone, <laughs> and broke my heart. I thought he was going to be the best evil guy ever. Yeah. And, but I didn't, whenever they introduced Ray, I never thought she was going to be the main person. I always thought it was going to be Finn. I, oh. I'm really big fan of Finn, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, another thing, too, that you just mentioned that uh, I was thinking about is they've done such a great job, uh, the Star Wars story, that each one of these three sets of three, uh, the the story arc the storyline um, encompasses the, the the three movies uh, you got you know for example uh, you know four five and six the the start of uh, of Luke Skywalker you know going from beginning to the middle to being the master being a master Jedi uh, same thing with the first three you got you know Anakin you know being found and now tormented as a uh, you know struggle as you know growing up and turning to the dark side and then you know same thing with uh with ray and all the characters that we've that we got and uh with the seven eight and nine uh you know and then of course you know um fan service is something that's uh i think in a way is more somewhat more of a newer concept 
So that's something they did push a lot more, I think, in especially in uh, seven, eight, nine, and I think they kind of had to do it because you know you think about how old the uh, first uh, episode four, five, and six are, and you, if you're gonna do something, you got to do it now. And then of course um, uh, that we were uh, unfortunately proved our got our point got proven to us because of losing um, Carrie Fisher, you know, in that process. Uh, yeah. you know, what do you, I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you think all about all that? Well, first let's see when the next 10, 11, whenever those ones come out, another 30 years or so, hopefully <laughs> everybody's still around to do that. Yeah. But I guess at this point we're at a, we're at a clean slate basically from the old franchise. That, yeah, that is true. Uh, the droids are alive still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long the droids last. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a that's a good point. Uh, you know, uh, Spencer Spencer quote unquote only um, voiced by the uh, actors that uh, you know in this particular case I'm singling out um, C three PO. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot that you can still do uh, with that with an you know of course another uh, actor um, you know doing the physicality. Well, and then the same thing too. Of course, we lost um, uh, P- Peter Mayhew who uh, acted uh, Chewbacca in the original movies. Um, you know, we lost him. No. Uh, you know, somewhat recently too. Uh, uh, but you know, there's there's still a lot, you know. In that case, like you said, we I think that they, they they still can do. Um, R two I think is going to last forever, whether he's in regular operating mode or low power mode, depending on how he how moody he is. Uh, you know, in which movie. <laughs> uh, so I mean, that's voice actor every single time. What's that? C three PO. He has the same voice actor every time. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, Anthony Daniels, I believe. Yeah. Wow. That's that's actually an interesting fact. <laughs> what <we're talking. laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, the the person who was in R two D two, Kenny Baker, has left he's us as well. Him. Yeah, he's he's been um, gone from us for a while. Um, one of the actually probably one of the few I do have a few uh, Star Wars autographs. I do have his. Um, as well as David Prowse, who we of course lost uh, this past year, um, who, who uh, did the physicality of Darth Vader in the original movies. Um, so yeah, so it's it's going to be um, interesting, you know. And then speaking along that, since we maybe can tangent, what do you think about something that Star Wars has been doing a lot of? Um, and that's doing the digital actors. You know, we got the uh, that with uh, Rogue One at the end with uh, with uh, Carrie Fisher and Princess Leia. Um, we got that with um, uh, Tarkin. What's that? Tarkin, right? That, I believe that's the uh, commander's name. Yes, we got that with him as well, right? And then, um, you know, spoiler alert, we got this with a little bit with the uh, Mandalorian and Mark Hamill. With um, Carrie, the Carrie Fisher one, that one was amazing. Mm-hmm. Tarkin, I think that one was pretty good. Until you, like, watch it on HDTV, honestly, then it's like, oh, maybe it is a little, looks a little bit like Woody from Toy Story. <laughs> I think. You know, if we're going to be telling stories for, in the past, it would be a little weird if we go back past a really important scene mm-hmm. and we might meet someone a hologram. We had the technology. Yeah. The Luke Skywalker one, there there was an actor, I guess, looks really close to him. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that would have been fine. Maybe I'm just hoping because so Luke Skywalker Walker could come back and just fight all the time like that. <laughs> right yeah and you know and i i looked at it because um you know a- after i watched the episode i looked at it like you know in a way this is almost a little bit of a necessity that they kind of had to do it because this is what they had you know the story writer had written for this episode so 
we're, you know, the only way that we can really pull it off and it makes sense is because we they wanted to have Luke in in this scene and it, it makes sense of why the, the Skywalker was in that to to take care uh, to take uh, possession of quote unquote of uh, of Groku so it makes it makes sense uh you know they're not Star Wars is doing something that um Star Trek is not doing, for example, and that's recasting uh, and, and making a, um, a alternate uh, sto- an, an alternate universe um, in Star War- in Star Trek. It's called the Kelvin timeline versus the Prime timeline for listeners. So, in a way, I think it's 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 good uh, that they, they they that they do this because they want to tell a, a complete story um, and use the same characters and make this thing huge instead of, you know, maybe somebody that's not a casual uh, viewer, if they did an alternate timeline uh, that people would get confused because people would be like, oh, I remember that when I grew up, the old Star Wars, and what's this new stuff that has no reference to what happened in the past? That was a big issue um, when I believe Disney first bought it and all of the legend stuff now is just like, oh, that's just for fun. Even though some of most of that stuff now, actually, they're bringing back like the Mandalorian stuff. Mm-hmm. They're making that canon with Jango Fett, making Boba actually Mandalorian. So stuff like that is like that's kind of a separate timeline. But oh, we actually are going to bring that in and make it canon now. So yeah. stuff like that can be confusing. Yeah, yeah, like like we were saying, we were talking with um, Scotty was uh, with us on, uh, you know that the the books were considered uh, canon and they're part of what uh, you know Star Wars had always done, and you know if you're not uh, if you're not like a, a avid reader of some of the Star Wars novels. Uh, you, you sometimes don't know all those in-depth details and if somebody's trying to explain this to you <laughs> versus what was the, the commonly more consumed media of, of the uh, TV shows and, and the movies. Well, in this particular case, back way back when, before um, Disney Plus, you know, just the just the movies, uh, you know, it, it might have been confusing to, to a more casual uh, person or somebody that was not uh, in-depth, a, a rabid fan. Yeah, but I believe the High Republic, they are, because I was interested in getting into that, because I believe that will be canon now, uh-huh. but they are going to be spreading that between um, comics, a book, I believe maybe a TV show in the future. I'm not 100% on that. So that one's going to be hard to complace. So for an average fan, if they bring those in, then it might be really confusing. Yeah. Yeah, and and for for the uh, listeners that may not know, and I, I'm honestly I'm not completely familiar with that. Uh, do you want to tell the listeners um, kind of what the High Re- Republic is kind of about, or what's their the the um, story presentation of uh, you know what they're what they're kind of doing with that uh, little uh, part? I honestly, it <laughs> came out a week or two ago. I want to read it, but I'm really scared as far as. <laughs> You know, it's the Jedi versus a Sith, like hundreds of years ago, before okay. the Skywalker saga, uh-huh. and it's just that's all I know, honestly. Okay, well, that yeah, I think that's a, a I think that's a, a a great summary to, you know, kind of uh, get people intrigued to what they do. But you know, like I said, I, you know, I think they have to be, um, you know, in any kind of. Uh, uh, movie or franchise they have to be careful when they go into the past because you want to make sure things line up and you don't like i said have those nitpickers out there that are going saying well that totally conflicts with what happened here what what's going to happen uh later on in in the timeline so you gotta you gotta be really really careful and, and make sure that um things do because i know for example in the star trek universe that they had a lot of issues with that yeah, there's a lot of those people online that will <laughs> turn your brain around like, yeah, I am mad about this, even though it's like nothing concerning. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, and it's but it's it's you know it's a good thing to have have your passions and have your fandom, and we're we're all we all have fandoms of a a lot of things, and that's that's one thing that uh, you know that we all should you know if I can get on a little bit of a uh, soapbox is that we all should be. Uh, understanding and, and uh, compassionate to everybody's going to have their their thoughts and their mm-hmm. processes and if you have the ability to have a uh, a conversation and be able to uh, uh, get get your point across and have somebody understand what your what your point is without tearing them down without negating them and you know have an understanding that they're passionate and uh about this while you're still having compassion about their passion you know that that's a good thing and that's um that recently um <laughs> came out uh for example uh in the uh, Star Trek universe uh this last this last week that if you can have um a conversation and get across to be able to communicate with two people basically um in your in your circle and have this um, make these connections with at least two people. That's uh, in your in your lifetime in this strange world that we are in. Uh, that's that's a great thing. Do you have any uh, uh, philosophy type stuff you'd like to share with the uh, the viewers, the listeners? Aliens and spaceships? Or are we talking about America? Well, this was this was. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh this was from this basically i'm i'm summarizing and from uh this is a quote from uh, gene roddenberry creator of star trek that was on the last episode of star trek discovery at the end of the episode and basically that's what basically paraphrased is to be able to on the strange strange planet that we are that we could be we could be aliens to this planet but if we can communicate basically with two other uh people um, in our lifetime, that's what makes um, the connectivity between people a, a, a great thing. Is basically is kind of what what he said in this, and they they kind of showed before they put that quote on the air, they kind of showed these connections that the uh, crew members of Star Trek Discovery uh, have made with each other because of what they've been through in in the series so it's it's a it's a, it's a great thing and a great thing to think about and very interesting that uh they pointed that they put this out and what has happened in you know uh the united oh, states yeah. over the last few days you know oh. so i mean it's it's interesting to see how sometimes these things that we're escaping for can give us comfort and hopefully a sense of optimism. Um, I'm, so, I'm going to say per se uh, of, of what's, what's happening in the world and um, you know, to be able to, to draw that uh, to, uh, to for people, if it gives them any comfort. Yeah, just something out there to let people know, like, Hey, there's actually still people out there mm-hmm. who uh, don't go straight to the, their opinion right that is right well you know what i mean yeah yeah it just yeah it's it's it they don't they don't they don't won't shut you out they they will take a time and to to listen you know like we say there's a difference between listening and hearing somebody when you listen to somebody you're actively participating in the conversation if you hear somebody you're just hearing the noise that they're that this, that's the the physical the audible noise that's coming out of somebody's mouth. So there's a there's a difference in that. And when you can when you can listen to somebody, that means so much more. So, exactly. Yeah. And the fact that we need some aliens to tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's an alien out there for us yeah. to conversate. <laughs> well, in, in, well, in this in this case, it was you know uh, Gene Roddenberry's uh, name was the. Nickname was the Great Bird of the Galaxy, so um, you know who knows. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, well, uh, Brew, you have anything else you'd like to add? Maybe uh, about the um, Star Wars uh, Mandalorian um, uh, thing for our for our discussion here, or do you think maybe we should wrap this up for the listeners? Uh, we can start wrapping it up for them. I just. Go to your local comic shop, your local library, and pick up the High Republic because 
guess mm-hmm. I am in case we have to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a that's a good, uh, great point. All right. Well, uh, Brumach, uh, tell the people, like I asked Scotty, uh, where they could uh, follow and uh, support you out there on the uh, interwebs and the social media and the such. If you type in B-R-O-O-M-A-K, you're going to find me because I'm the only one. Well, except I think there was this one guy who had a profile picture of a cow. But don't don't follow him. <laughs> you want the buffalo. Buffalo, no cow. <laughs> yes. All right. And then, yeah, so you'll find this, your, your social medias. Uh, let me also tell the listeners, uh, support you out there on the uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. Buy a t-shirt. Uh, help support these guys and gals and, uh, you know, in the limited uh, amount of shows that we've got uh, going on. So that's be great to support them as well. Well, Brumach. Thank you once again, uh, Scotty. Thank you for uh, joining us, uh, listeners. Thank you for uh, joining us on this uh, 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 universal uh, galaxy fest of uh, RMP Radio. Let the force be with you all. Once again, a big, huge thank you to both the Buffalo Brew Mock and Scotty Long for coming on to this episode of uh, RMP Radio. And uh, continue to check them out there on the uh, social medias and the interwebs with everything they've got going on all uh, Rocky Mountain Pro. All right. Well, before we get out of here, uh, let's uh, pay some bills like they used to say back in the day. You want to get some merchandise of your uh, favorite uh, Rocky Mountain Pro superstars. A few different ways you can do that. Head over to the uh, rmpwrestling.com. Click on the merchandise link or if you're in Amazon.com uh, or the Amazon app. Do a quick search for Rocky Mountain Pro. You will be uh, presented with a few different choices there that you can uh, make a selection from. Or hit up your uh, favorite uh, Rocky Mountain Pro superstar. Uh, Check to see if they have a Pro Wrestling Tees uh, website uh, store set up. Uh, Some of them I know even have uh, like other ones like uh, Brain Buster Tees as well and uh, be great to uh, support these guys and gals and uh, speaking of uh, pro wrestling tees of course even yours truly now as of this recording has a pro wrestling tees so if you want to support me uh, that would be great as well I've got one dev- design up there right now some more to come and to create Upcoming events. Well, we uh, have, of course, our charged shows happening there on the uh, YouTube and the Fight TV and Right Now TV and so on. Uh, Just head over to uh, rmpwrestling.com, click on the events link, and you'll be presented with them uh, there. Also on uh, twitch.tv slash Rocky Mountain Pro, you want to watch us, uh, you can right there subscribe. It's as easy as if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a a Twitch.tv subscription automatically with yours. Uh, All you got to do is uh, subscribe and point that to Rocky Mountain Pro. We would greatly appreciate that. Or if you do have have yours already tied up, or if you are not a Prime subscriber, it's a nominal fee like $5.99 a month and well worth uh, supporting the guys and gals, and of course, you when you do this, you get to see the recordings as they happen before they get onto those other platforms. So that would be uh, greatly appreciated. And you can then also uh, head over into the subscriber chat and interact with uh, all of the uh, fans and everybody watching as well. All right, you want to follow us. Uh, a couple different ways to do that. Head over to uh, rmpwrestling.com. Everything does stem from right there. And then on the social medias of the Facebook, the Twitter, and the Instagram, a couple different accounts we want you to uh, follow, and that is the Rocky MTN Pro. That is phonetically spelled to you, the Rocky Mike, T- Mike Tango November Pro. And then also RMP on Twitch, Rocky Mountain Pro on Twitch. We would greatly appreciate you if you follow those uh, both accounts out there on the interwebs and the social media. All right, I want to thank you all for listening to this uh, uh, Galaxy Fest of uh, Fun on uh, RMP Radio, where pro wrestling is elevated. <laughs>